bring the Dunbar Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Thursday, July 7th. All three selectmen are present. The town administrator is present. Coding for the town of Dunbar is uh, Mr. Leo Martell. We'll pass those recordings on to Linda Nickerson. Linda Nickerson for posting. Thank you, Leo, as always. I thought you'd be in Canada by now. But I'm glad you're here in the United States. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Okay. Um, old business, gentlemen. We have some minutes from last, from two weeks ago. I'll make a motion to approve the 7 p.m. regular meeting minutes from June 23rd, 2022. As amended, Dave? Yep. On a second. Okay. And I just like all, in any discussion on those minutes? No. A few, a few minor changes, but that was good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just want to, for the record, I just uh, want to kind of let them note that the, uh, Lee, if you pass on, we're still very pleased with the uh, recorded secretary. Thank you. Just pass it on to her. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up public comment first. Okay. Just uh, curious, how are we on schedule on the uh, on the uh, town restoration? Town I'd say we are. Um, Dave, you want to make a comment on that? Um, I was going to make a comment later tonight. I know that um, the windows are not due in until August 17th, so they're probably going to plastic it up so they can keep the subcontractors working on the inside. Mm -hmm. But they were hoping to have the outside all done for old home day, and I'm not sure that's going to happen. Just because you can't side it that quick, I don't think, so after it's in. So. Yeah. Many vendors have delays right now, and window companies are no... Yeah, right. No uh, smaller than that, so um, they are going to have all of the exterior pretty well cleaned up by the time we have old home day. So the scope of the fencing will be reduced very small. They'll be able to use this part of the parking lot right over here on this side at least. I remember, I recall the last time we talked, we were, we were concerned about having the area fenced off with snow fencing, and that immediately went up shortly after our meeting the other you know, last two weeks ago. So I was very happy to see that, and it's continuing to be used. And I'm only concerned, I just want to make sure that um, uh, as we all travel into our area as selectmen, that area is not open for the public. I've seen, there are members of the public who have been in that area, and for safety reasons, for liability reasons, they should not be in the area. No. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you can pass on to the uh, any workmen, and, and I'm going to let, let Mary know too. I don't want people rummaging through, walking through. Uh, can you clarify that, please? That would include employees, employees uh, volunteers, of committee members? Those are all public people that The only people that should be there are the selectmen who do the building inspector, the uh, the town the town representative engineer who's doing the inspections, yeah. and the selectmen. And the contractors. Yeah. The, their people. There. Yeah. I, uh, I stopped last, I think it was yesterday evening as I was coming through. It was a young girl taking pictures. I thought she might be from the newspaper. Um, she was actually from Chicago's office taking pictures for their um, work portfolio. So um, she was outside taking pictures, but I just I just don't want to have someone get injured and then <coughs> we're stuck. Uh, the town's liable for the injury. I did ask one other resident last week to um, not go in the building during construction. There's no rails up and handrails on the stairs, and he was on the second floor, so he immediately left. Okay, okay. and we'll move on. Thank you, Leo. Anything yeah. else? Nope. Thank you, Chief. You're on the agenda, so... Yeah, well, same subject. I need to go over there. You can go in. <laughs> You're on the list of people. Because they need people. to... Uh, we need to mount the Knox box. And they got to put a block in somewhere where we decide to put it. Yep. So then you're going to have to put a block in to support it. Because just the siding won't... Right. The sheathing won't be strong enough. So you know uh, the job super over there is Bobby Shagnon. He's pretty, pretty nice guy. Yeah, very knowledgeable. We just got to select where we want to do it. I don't like doing the front because it sticks out probably one of the front corners, yep. left or right corner. But this, know, like, this is probably the week you want to get to them. <clears throat> they're going to have to, like I said, put a support in the wall. Right. They don't have to put the box up, but when they start siding, you know, the box should be up so they can cut around the box. Chief, I got one other question for you. I was going to ask the um, architect, but I, I think they're shut down for the week. I wasn't able to get to them. 
um, when the existing entryway in there goes through like a little vestibule area and then into the main area. We're going to leave that area just as it is and she's going to use it as some sort of limited closet. Does that alarm system need to come out of that closet or can it stay where it is? As long as they put an enunciator, a remote enunciator, which I've already talked to them about. What part of I'm sorry, what did you say, a remote? It's a remote enunciator panel. Oh, so okay. It's off the main panel. Yep. So it's got to be somewhere by the front door when you come in so you can read it. Yep. But you can't reset the system to do all that. You have to go to the main panel. <coughs> and Mary said she doesn't have a block. It'll oh, okay. be in the closet. Good. But she's not going to pile stuff in front of it. Oh, good. So. As long as there is a remote, we can decide where we want to put that, and that will give you an indication of what's going on. It's a status. A status yeah. of, okay. Yeah, it's a remote in the enunciator off the main panel. Gotcha. Same information, but you can't do as much. Gotcha. It'll give you the location of the alarm and stuff. Should be somewhere in the front entrance way somewhere else. Okay. Well, some of them are outside, some of them are inside. Uh, the school ones are actually on the outside. They walk up the building. Probably in the vestibule. Yeah, just tuck it around the corner or something. Yeah. So that that way you wouldn't have to get to the closet until. Yeah. So if that door opens, probably to the <laughs> right. Oh no, that door has to open outward. So it opens up against the bathroom door, I think. Yeah, somewhere where it's not too conspicuous. If you make sure that early next week to touch base with what you want done. Because when the, the guy was here doing the alarm testing a couple weeks ago, I asked him to uh, see if that panel. Take a remote enunciator because I mean, that's not, it's fairly new, but it's not you know, state of the art thing by any means. And he said, Yeah, you can do it, no problem on those because okay. we have the same panel at the station. So he said, That's no problem. So he was kind of like, Well, you know what I mean? I said, Well, I, no, I can't tell you that you can do it. I go, It'd be a process. I go, We have an electrician who's in charge of the fly alarm system, but he, he already told me he might have to reach out to a company. He gave me some guy's name, didn't ring a bell with me, because he's not really familiar. Uh, was it I, uh, was this well, maybe you can connect the two. Island? I, I, Irish, Irish, Irish Electric? Yeah. yeah. The guy I talked to said, yeah, we're, we're pretty familiar with residential stuff, but that system, he said we might have to, you know, have another company come in and help us out. And he threw a guy's name at me. So, yeah, I mean, these guys could also do it since they service our, our stuff. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's either way. Yeah, it would be nice to connect the two together. All right. Should I reach out to um, Pro Technology and see if they can get us a quote or come out for an estimate? Or? Is Pro Technology who you're speaking of? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It would have to, it would ha they would have to talk and work with Irish Electric. Yeah, why don't you see if you can um, communicate between the two? Or get the two. Connected. Yep. He's left me a couple of messages saying. All right, I don't have his phone number. I, 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 I told him I can't it. give you permission to, to to do the work. There I go. It's a contract. I go. It's you know. Do but, you know who you were talking to at Pro Technologies? <coughs> uh, me a message. The guy I talked. I just happened to talk to the guy that was here that day. He must have gone and told his boss. Cause his boss is the one. Oh. Who called me? And I uh, <coughs> know, you know, if he wanted us to do the job. I said, well, I, that's beyond my. Give me permission to do that. <laughs> so, stranger things have happened in this town. So they did say they could give us a quote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, I don't no, I don't think he did. They did leave a message. I'd have to find it. Okay. If you get back to Lee. Yeah, I'll go through. I'm not gonna. Okay. okay. Too many. All right. I'm gonna close. Anything else? We got to go on the agenda next. Yeah. We'll stand by. I'm gonna close the public comment down and. Uh, Chief, don't keep talking. You're okay. So, <laughs> uh, parking. Yeah, I've been approached by the Central New Hampshire Special Response Unit, who our police department joined. Yeah, was in the spring or winter, whatever it was. So they run an ambulance and with paramedics that respond to incidents, but they're having a hard time finding people, and the three all the medics they had. Or full time firefighters, they've retired in the last six months and they've quit, so they have nobody except for an ER doctor and Conkey. And they have a vehicle, it's an ambulance, so they have no place to park. Is that going to solve our problem? 
for so, the next. Sign them up for 20 yeah, years, John. Yeah, yeah, really. But I mean, they have a vehicle to respond to incidents with, but they really don't transport in it. It's like they get them there and bring their gear. So, say if it was an Arps town or something, you know, they would come in with these medics and they could you know, treat at that medic level, which we don't have that capability. But anyways, they have a vehicle. And all these towns belong to their central New Hampshire. No one has room to put it inside, including us. And so, they've recruited a paramedic now that lives in Denmark. So, temporarily, they want to park the vehicle at our fire station, obviously outside. So if they get a call, this guy can come, come get it. So I said, I don't know for him. I said, temporary, I said, you know, can't be here during the winter. That's for sure. I'd like to not see it here when school starts. But I said, you know, I don't have a problem leaving it outside there until they decide what they want to do. If they want to get rid of it, can buy a car or get a police department give them a, a vehicle. So just to respond in, they don't really need an ambulance because they don't transport. Is it better than ours? <laughs> eh, I haven't seen it in a while. It's an old Hawkington ambulance. And it's been in Webster for quite a while because okay. there's two people in Webster and they both got done. So then they moved it somewhere else and it's been sitting in the parking lot over in Ball, over there. And now they want to bring it over here. So I said, I don't have a problem. It's a temporary thing. I said, you know, obviously you can't be inside because we don't have a room anyways. But I said, I'd have to check with you guys to see if it's okay to park it outside for a I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. I don't see any issues with it. No. Yeah. Like you said, I think the winter would become an issue. Oh, hey, definitely. I'm, I'm, on that, I'm on that train, yeah. so it's not in the way for no, I told them it, it can be a temporary thing, but it can't let you when, when snow flies. I'd say and December first would be a cutoff. Yeah, and they're they're, they're hoping to get rid of it. Cause, cause some town was supposed to donate them a, an SUV or a cruiser, and the deal fell through. Um, so basically, just storing their equipment. And like I said, they they now they have one person. They didn't have anybody before. The guy in Dunbar. Uh, you know, I, I think you have full blessing from the select board. But okay. I would just just uh, let the police chief know what's yeah, going on. Yeah. Same thing, we're going to see what's the best spot. For yeah, it. and coordinate the best spot for it yeah. between you two. They're hoping yeah. to get Concord on board with all their people because then they could keep it in Concord and uh, they'd have plenty of medics around, but it's a, the union's involved and it's a, it's a pay issue thing. Uh, you know, if you belong to it, you go to an incident and you're on duty, they have to backfill your position, they have to pay overtime. For you to be on the call, they have to pay overtime for whoever they brought in to cover you. Then they have to train, do so many hours of training. So it's a, you know, it's a burden on the town or the city to, to pay, you know, to support this, these medics. Yeah. But, you know, but like in the bigger towns, you get the cities, then you obviously get the union law because it's a, who gets the overtime? You know, it's a whole another process of, you know, paying. City's eventually gonna if it's an incident, the city, the town get you know get reimbursed, but because uh, you know they charge out for those incidents, so they're having a hard time. That's one reason why they're having a hard time getting people, because a lot of people won't support them. You know, I think the uh, since we're kind of new to the game in this group, I'd say we'll, we'll give them all the we'll support. Them. Yeah, put it on. I said I, I said I don't have a problem, Rick, but I said I'd have to run it by you guys, gentlemen. You call the consensus. Yep. Okay. Green light. Okay, so if you see it sitting there, okay. I'm not sure what it looks like or what it says on the side. I was gonna say. I think they got their name. It, it, it used to be Hopkins, but we still have Hopkins in our house. If you see any of them sitting there. I can just see it turn into like a Ghostbusters <coughs> like type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's supposed to be temporary. Only the first few letters off the name. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I don't think it would be vandalized sitting out there. No. Police stations. Okay. okay. So if you see it there, that's. Tell them they can find it there for okay. temporarily. Okay. Since I since you have the since I have you here, can you give us a, a snapshot of how your barbecue went? Barbecue was very successful. Okay. We sold 300 tickets and put out 280 meals. We had 20 left over, which we always buy extra anyways. People don't show or uh, 
people come. I could have eaten 10 of them. I yeah. was in town that weekend. Yeah, so yeah, it was, you know, a lot yeah, of people, good, we haven't done it for a few years, a lot of people we hadn't seen for a while, so. And, and before it kicked off, remember that item that Donna Dunn was secretive yeah. about? Basically, what she found with her travels and tribulations, she found an old fire department hat, and she put a uh, helmet, helmet. Yeah. And she put it into a like a show a shadow box. I saw Facebook for the for the chief and uh, with some uh, picture of someone wearing it. What about sixty years ago? Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> and from so, Dunbarton. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so uh, a little bit of history. She two found people, it. Two two different people in pit, or pictures of two different people. One was what's his name? Not he used to be the police chief. Dark guy myself. Yeah. Andrews? Oh, the, uh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's in one of the pictures. Yeah, right. That, mm -hmm. right down by oh, yeah. the little house that. Uh, by Blackbrook Road. Yeah, the house that oh, uh, Ruben lives in. Yeah, Ruben oh. lives. Ruben's house. Oh, yeah. Ruben's house. Chief uh, Will. Oh, I can't say his name. Uh, Jesus, I can't even. Anyways, he's in one of them. And then there's a picture of another. Marshall. Deputy Chief. Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. Knew it come to me. Yeah, Marshall. Well, Marshall. I, I think the kudos for uh, for uh, the finding of the helmet and uh, yeah, it was at some auction I guess up north and yeah. said done buying on it, so, two on it. So kudos at Don Don yeah. Don for finding that and making a little making a little presentation box for you. Let's go next. One of the old, in one of the pictures, the guys holding a, a beer bottle, a brown beer bottle. You guys still do that? Vintage. No. <laughs> 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 so uh, like. No, donate one that he has. Found I, the I, vintage, I, found, uh, I, I found a 40, 43 beer bottle down in Clough State Park intact. And so uh, we'll put it in the case with next to the kind of matches. With the two pictures. It <laughs> shows a guy holding the brown. Yeah, well, the okay, one of the pictures. So that was it. It says number two on the helmet? Yeah. Which is the, the deputy chief. She has a picture of the deputy chief. She thought maybe it was his helmet too, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was probably a company. You know, companies, maybe a company at a. Every department had a company. Is know, that the oldest hat we have? Uh, it's helmet. Helmet? Yeah. There's a jazz got an older one. Uh, this far they come across, but well, I think it's the same vintage. Yeah, old leather helmets. Yeah, it, it's a pretty good shape, really. I mean, uh, considering. Yep. So yeah, so it's in this metal or yeah, metal shadow box. box. Yeah. Uh, Foxy glass box. Uh, so. Shouldn't be bothered by the environment. We're going to mount it. We think we found a good spot for it because it's a pretty good sized box. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go down the stairs, there's just a big open area. There's nothing up there. Yep. So if you put it right up in there, when you're leaving the room, you, you look right at it. So, and the, the local guy built it with the box. And, uh, it's actually got a bracket on the back. Of the unit, so. You didn't want to start wearing it? <laughs> they have an old metal one, an aluminum one, that we have at the station. But this is a little bit of history. Well, that. So. Yeah, so it was good. It was neat. Yeah. Thank Very you, John. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. You. Okay, Lee, you're up next. All right. Uh, I, it's now July 7th, and I typically provide the board with quarterly expenses and revenue so the board can be familiar with how we're progressing through the year with uh, and with our expenses and where we are with our revenue. So if you guys want to look at the ex uh, expenditure report, I did a back-to-back -back, uh, sheet. I kind of went through it briefly. I don't see anything that's unusual or stands out. Um, it's still early in the year. And we do have a lot of the account lines and within the departments that will not expend their funds until the latter part of the year. But for the most part, we're right on track. Um, payroll should be at close to 50% for the full-time positions. You know, looking at the numbers, there's uh, a lot of them in the 50s, which looks great. Right on par. Yep. With there are no big surprises. So the only one thing I'll point out to you uh, is page three, the go town government maintenance and improvements. You might want to just familiarize yourself with that um, 
account balance because I'll be asking you guys to discuss some uh, an expense that's coming up. Which the, one? This top account town building maintenance and improvements. Um, that's where we have a little bit of excess funds for incidentals that come up that we don't know about that, you know, um, we, we need to... Smack another page, page three. Page three, um, right in the middle, government buildings and top account. There's still remaining balance of 67293 Lee, is that, um, is that includes my contingency, which I simply subtracted as a board? It does. That's the only thing I did not take out of there. There so were some items that you guys approved and have been removed from this total. Right, but that, that has not been removed from that this That has not been removed, no. Uh, I, I don't want to say it public, but I think it's, there's a money in there which I have reserve contingency until the fall. And I'm not going to expend that money. I don't I have boldly agreed not to expend any money. And, and you've included that in the expenditures so far? Has not. Have not. The, the dollar amount that you guys asked me to encumber or hold aside, I'll, I can do a quick No, I, I, I know I know exactly detail. I know exactly how it would come out. So I think I'll share with them. No. I, we, I, I know that, but we haven't spent 82 on that. There were other items within there. I had to take out the air exchanger, the sidewalk, and um, the window cleaning, and there's maybe one or two other items that okay, I took so out, that's out of, there, out okay. of here. Yes. Okay. Yep, that would make sense. Cause yeah, the thing is, yeah, we said we would ag aggressively look at that after this was yeah. complete, essentially complete. Well, we do have a couple projects in the fall. Absolutely. Once we're sure that this is going to be. Not killing, up, killing the budget. Um, since we're on that section of the subject, I'd like to bring up one thing that we need to um, consider on that. Um, do you remember when we did the um, sprinkler system? Yes. The electrical is on the town's end of it. Correct. So um, they're upgrading that whole building now as part of this town hall project addition. Okay. Uh, so the electrical uh, panel is getting upgraded as well as the transformer and the um, architect sent in a electrical engineer to look at the total building envelope okay. to see how big the transformers need to be and everything because they're upgrading the wire one the building and everything. Understood. So as part of that walkthrough when we did that, I know that we pointed out that there was going to be a sprinkler system in the building. Um, this week it came up, uh, John from Shacoin's office called because he said he wanted to make sure. Um, what happened is the guy that's doing the sprinkler system asked if their electrician was going to be wiring up his system. And he said, well, I don't know. That's on gotcha. the town side of it. Which it would make sense to have the same electrician wire that up. If, but we would have to fund that portion of it once we get a price from him. Uh, but the question was to make sure that that was fit into the envelope of the building electrical. In other words, that's a separate item later on. Yes. Integrated item in the electrical plan of scheme. Yes, in the plan of the entire building and envelope because that's how they size the transformer. That's right. I said I believe it was because he was made aware of it at that walkthrough, but um, the architect is not in their office this week. I think they're shut down for the 4th of July holiday. So until I get that answer, okay, I don't know, but it would be good to use the same electrician hopefully to, yeah. Save to on the cost, wire right? that up. Yeah, yeah, he's already there and it's no learning curve. Yeah, so as soon as um, they say that that was part of the consideration of the entire building, then and we'll get that a portion of the that. that separation of the bill would be cut out of our numbers. Yeah, we'll do is we'll have them give an estimate, and if we don't like the number, we can always give a separate one ourselves. Right. Okay, that's Justin. Are you happy with that? Yep. Kind of a long explanation, but no. The thing is, if we want an integrated electrical solution, not, yes. a, not a piecemeal one. Yeah. Because I can see it's all done, and now we have to have electricians come in and do it again. Right. That would incur more expenses. So that will come out of that at, at a more recent time. So you're saying that the addition itself has electrical work needed for it, the sprinkler that's being installed in that section? No. But no. the main building was our responsibility. Correct. So you're trying to incorporate the two together. Right. Have one electrician do it all wiring one time rather so than more, more importantly, we need to make sure that the electrical engineer that was hired by the architect okay. included the load from the sprinkler pump. Oh, okay. Excellent. I guess it's more yeah. important. That's probably the yeah. Okay. Excellent. 
Okay, Lean, let's look at the, the other stuff, the uh, revenues. Okay, so what I did for you is I ran uh, the revenues report back to back, just a full page. Uh, we are looking really good for our um, account numbers, and what I did for the board, just to <coughs> shorten the review on the back page, I we have current year revenues at 578000 653, which is what we have collected through all our different departments. Outstanding revenue still pending would be flood control 70,000 if we get that complete uh, money. The rooms and meals, which would be 135,000. I would block grant that should be guaranteed their estimates, but they're usually within a thousand dollars of that dollar amount. Forest PILT, which is uh, a small dollar amount we get for the federal forest through the flood control area. I just got the letter um, this week, as a matter of fact, it's 3288, so it's 288 above. So that combined revenue comes to 278,177, so which will reduce the uncollected revenues down to 23.4%. So the new uncollected revenue as of June 30th is 261,729. If we get all of these DRA, um, regular annual budgets. So we're looking really, really good. The room and meals, do we, is that predictable? <clears throat> it, I'm, I think because COVID is is close now, it's not as prevalent. And it with, should be. It should be at least that. Last year we got $260,000. Does your $150,000 affect the revenues here? On the um, money that we use for the building? No, that's a liability that's, that's completely one. separate. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there, there are no pleasant surprises yet? No, they're not. Um, I see that when you look at current use. Yep. Uh, I have three outstanding that are going to be coming uh, through the office here in the next few weeks for Zachary Drive extension. Uh, so we will meet that um, current use penalty, no, no problems, I'm sure. Um, yield tax or above. Can I ask a question only because I don't know, maybe Justin knows. How close is the completion of the road for the... For uh, this one? Yeah. The country? Uh, I think they've got the base coat and yeah, they've they, sold almost all the lots, but that's not in current use, if that's why you're asking. That golf course project, none of that is in current 249 use. 249 acres is not in current use? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Why, yeah. because it was an active golf course? It was a business and you can't have it in current use. It didn't mm -hmm. fall all the talks we've had in the town was talks about that being in current use. Yeah, no, but the Zachary Drive extension is 12 lots there. Those are selling for 200 and, two, and 250 each. Yeah. So we'll get the current use penalties for those. Then the ones on Guile Hill Road, this is, what is it, seven acres? Seven lots over there or six? So those are in current use, so we'll get six. They from have there. two lots listed on that uh, extension at 169. So. And they're selling for that. One bought three of them for 400 and ninety-seven thousand dollars. On the Zachary Drive, Drive extension. One's a two and a half acre, one's like a four and a half acre, and the other one's twelve acres. He must have been a developer or something. Uh, he's from Bow. But the unfortunate the unfortunate thing is they won't get we won't get the current use penalty until they build on it. So if he only builds on one, there's two still outstanding that could potentially stay stay in uh, current use. Yeah, Jeff had gone down to countryside before they uh, hardly had pulled their um, equipment out. They had asked them to come down before they pulled everything out, and he had looked at everything and said everything was up to par. So good. He had noted at a um, meeting that we should um, reduce the loan. Yeah, but not give it back at all because uh, case of seeding, he's seen in the past that seeding doesn't grow back the second year, and the town is liable to obviously go back and kind of touch things up, so they wanted to make sure there was still money able to do that. He's, so very, he's, he's learned his lesson from many years ago. He's very conservative about yeah. making sure things are done right. So he asked us that didn't uh, release the whole bond. Because he wasn't sure if it was going to switch over. That, that, that'll be a, oh, that'll be a oh, recommendation, holding that'll be recommendation from the planning board to this board, and then we, we released the lot. Oh, yeah. portion thereof. Yeah, exactly. And we haven't gotten a, anybody asked for that yet. But there, don't be in a rush. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're just not sure if it's yeah. going to change. Okay. So right. I'll, I'll go through a few of these categories with you. Um, the first one, again, we just spoke about current use plans, uh, change that. 
um, we still have 66%, we will probably get that, um, the remainder of that before the end of the year. Yield tax is always an unknown, uh, depends on what people pull for a timber tax. Um, interest on tax are just basically, uh, or mostly, um, any delinquent property taxes, then the tax collector collects a small portion of interest on those unpaid taxes. On page two, we have business and licenses, which is the town clerk's department. Motor vehicles, you see um, the business account numbers on the left-hand side of that group are primarily the 3220, which cover the four bottom accounts within that category. The computer breaks them out. But we have one budgeted total for 675000 Currently, we're at, if you look at the bottom line, 444132 So she only needs to collect for the next six months $230,000. So that's 34% of her budget. So more than likely, she will exceed her um, our projected our budget line, which is, will be really good. And I did merge the June um, debt uh, hope was able to fix it with that so that you have it's more up, up to date. It's up to date through June. So that's a really good one. Um, building permits, they've been extremely busy. You can see that we had conservatively budgeted 20000 for revenues. She has already collected 16899 That leaves only 3100 remaining to collect. That's 15%. I did look at that line in detail, and I did note that the higher building permits were for six of the uh, building permits, and those would represent homes. So she's got at least six new homes in her building permit collection, which equates to new assessment, new pickups, and et cetera. The next category is all other licenses, 3290. She only, uh, that's only budgeted at 10,000 for the entire group. There's 11% that's required for her to collect. Revenues from other government, again, we went over some of those. It would be the highway block grant. The PILT, which I mentioned in the last page, is also listed there. On page three at the top is the flood control, rooms and meals, and then grants and other state reimbursements. So you can see that we're at 91% remaining, but we should get the uh, projected numbers that we did put a conservative number for. Hopefully more. Right, hopefully more, yep. So you know, come on the um, flood control and the rooms and meals doesn't have the prior year. Uh, I don't know why. Current year budget. It should be there. They're all zeroed up for some reason. Hmm. <coughs> well, maybe I'll just look at it for next time. Yeah, I may have to ask Anna to find out why, because it looks like there's prior year revenue, 403000 on the Hollywood Block Grant. I'm wondering if they somehow grouped them all together into one account. I'd have to do it, look at it in detail. Good, good but catch, I, But I can do that. Good, good catch, Dave. Um, then income from other departments, that's always um, a $50,000 conservative budget, the system breaks them out independently. Um, you can see that um, on the fourth account number, recycling income, uh, Woody's had a really good year. <coughs> uh, exceeded that $20,000 conservative budget by 11636 um, And I was looking at those in detail earlier today, and it, he has actually received at least Five. Woody, since you're here, what's what's your favorite item to turn to uh, recycle for money? <laughs> Cardboard. Cardboard. Aluminum. 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 Okay. He's actually um, received at least four checks that are almost over three thousand. One, two, three, four checks over three thousand dollars for his um, recycling income, and two of them are just under four thousand. So he's um, whatever they're doing down there, they're doing a great job. And, and you can see he's over budget at June by 11636 Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then everything else kind of speaks for itself. It's really, really not big items. But it's always good for the board to be aware of where we stand for the revenues, because those will uh, obviously generate additional well, surplus I, or give the board. No, the, the governor keeps talking about sending all this money back to the, the locals, and the thing is, I, don't, I just don't see it yet. Yeah, but uh, 
We are on mark right now. And I, I'm, I'm willing to wait for it. As long as it comes in this year, I'm good. Any questions on revenues or expenses? Justin? Okay. No. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to go right to the mail, uh, mailbox items. Um, first item, I got a... Uh, It's a concrete slab installation. We know we talked about that last time. Okay. Uh, second item, Chief Berman and I wanted an update on graphics. He explained to me um, that he took some of the graphics off because uh, they were like this decrepit, you might say, and there were people were complaining about it. So he stripped some of them off, and he's um, kind of reluctant because it's an old vehicle and he doesn't necessarily want to spend the extra dollars on, on a, a thousand, less than a thousand, over a thousand dollars on new decals when they're not really. You saw uh, Justin's email and my email. I I know you commented. I didn't read it. I didn't read that. Um, I commented after Justin in full agreement with Justin that um, we believe that at least those cars that we're using, there are many cars around town that look similar to that. Without the proper writing on them, if they're going down and doing patrolling on roads, you're not sure it's a police car or not because we don't have our name on the side. And, you know, I've always been a fact that, you know, the police cars should be marked so that people know. Um, and you're out there in the neighborhoods patrolling. Um, I think it's very important. I think that Chief Rumblard commented uh, that he was in somewhat of agreement to that, right, Justin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. But it's, it's going to come down to, uh, I want to be honest, we got to fund it. Yeah, he said he thought he had enough in his budget to fund one of the cars, and I was thinking... If it's, you know, $1,500 for stickers, I think we should fund the other one if we need to be to make and sure that... And in that email, he had, uh, he had said he started with one of the cruisers, I forget which one, it was either two or three, and after I had responded back saying I didn't think it was the best of ideas to run around with an unmarked car in our town with the groans, you know, the suspicious activity that happens everywhere, and now the community is okay. trained to... If you see something, say something. Well, okay. why are we sending around our police cruisers with no markings? I mean, I just, with a state surplus auction right in Concord, I mean, there's numerous vehicles around town that look similar. You know, that could, okay. could so, be copied so quite recently. I just if, don't If you can budget for one, then that means <clears throat> I recommend we take the uh, out of our maintenance line, maintain as a maintenance item. To yeah. And, and after I expressed my concerns, he was he was in agreement, and he stopped removing the air. He decided not to schedule the removal of decals on the second car. Right, but the... Uh, oh, I understood that they did them both. On yeah. No, no, he had done the other one. The one's still really bad, poorly marked, but oh. it's still there. Because it's, I think it's more the passenger side. It's just probably the way it gets well, parked somewhere. It just gets more sun on one side. The question is, do we want to replace that those decals in the... Uh, well, my thought is, we went to the town last year with the car. We went to year before. We went to year before. So for three years, we've been to the town for car. I know this coming year, we're skipping the year, irregardless of what the requests are or whatever, because I've sat there and told our taxpayers that we're going to do them every other year. We haven't been able to do that because we have well, a loan load or we've had... Yeah, there was, there was an exception. exception yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. and the thing is, it can still arise, but we've got to be flexible enough to be... Right, so I know that we are going to go another year or two with those two vehicles, regardless of the mileage. Then, yeah. I, then we may be worthwhile to put the decision sticker on. And he did say that even one of them was, it was the higher <laughs> mileage one, but with the new cruiser coming in, this fall projected for this fall that it was going to get moved down to like uh, the patrol, the, uh, the detail vehicle, yeah, I think. Special duty so, yeah, but so special duty still, need, still needs decals too. Yeah. Yeah, correct. People respect the symbol, you know, they All see right. that and they slow down. Are, are we in a consensus then? Yeah. yeah. All right. He'll pay for one of the decals on the current one and we'll pay for the uh, come out of our maintenance line. Well, he him, wasn't sure what his right. budget could handle, so I think let him yeah. see what he can handle and then. Come to us if we need to have to say the consensus of the select board is that we'd like them to have them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I'm, I'm ready to augment if needed. Yeah. Because yeah. I know his budget was kind of tight. Already, there's a uh, there's an item we have to talk about. Um, is that the grant? Uh, we discussed the uh, camera grant of, of, uh, of accepting the camera grant. However, <coughs> there's a cost that we have to pay our share. Yeah. You know, we had already agreed upon. Right, and but I think where it's where is it coming from when it budget? Well, it's ninety one hundred dollars, fifty four hundred down. Well, it's half of that. Right, he has he has a portion in his budget, and then the remainder that we have to pick up, the 
lines, through your budget lines, is $5,400. Right. And we did not clarify it for my office. So to be I asked them, how much time do we have to execute on this? We have more than a year to execute on this. So the thing is, we can, we can wait and make it part of our budget this fall. Right. And well, the thing is, my understanding is that grant, which I just sent them additional paperwork today, was that the purchase has to be done before the end of the calendar. I thought so too. Well, that, yeah. That's contrary to what he told me. So I want to get a clarification. Yeah, yeah, let's get a clarification of that. In other words, I'm willing to do it, but put it on a, a fall priority list. No, as I said, we can wait till the fall to see what other things come exactly. out. I mean, maybe because it's back ordered or something. I don't know. I know the town's portion has to be paid, I think, as part of that. Sorry, but the thing is, he, he kind of uh, alluded to me that we had some time, and I was going to use that time effectively. Yeah, I know that he did go over that amount, and we did agree. Well, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we just never identified where we're going to take it from. I mean, well, we have lines within you can run. Well, the thing is, on, we, we have old cameras, and he's upgrading our new, ca our old, new cameras, and so it's uh, it can be considered maintenance to some degree. Mm -hmm. I'm not stretching it either. It is it is replacing the fuck cameras. And the, the beauty of these cameras is it's going to be easy to upload and download um, footage without taking hours upon hours. Well, with the grant, it's saving his budget overall year to year. I got that. Grant. It wasn't right. originally you know, spread out through three years or something. Right. Oh, that was five and years. Five years. Five, five, years. Was, five right. years. And then in this grant, he gets a lot of money saving. Yeah. And you have to take the grant. Okay. Um, just let it, let's get some clarity here, okay. and we'll go from there. If we can. Uh, <laughs> We have enough money we can do it if, if we force to it, but again, I'm being, we're being conservative and as we expend our dollars, and that's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, email from Avisaurus, no one in town, the supply portion of the electric bill will move and double last year's August supply rate. <laughs> no kidding. I think we're all get that great news today. Well, the unit already doubled theirs a lot. We yeah. went back down June 1st. Okay. <coughs> Welfare director requesting the uh, board adopt the state recommended language for assisting homeless in the town's welfare guidelines. Liam, can you talk to that a little bit? So basically, the, the towns have to adopt the language that's on that um, document. She has a template as part of the welfare guidelines, and that gives her enforcement to uh, when someone comes in and is having difficulties or becomes homeless that they can't, they have to comply with our requirements. So basically, we would be able to place them in a home somewhere so that it, it's for their best interest. And by them declining that document, by signing it, they could be refused any assistance, so. It, it sounds more of an administrative problem. Just a, you have a copy of it? I have right here, yeah. sure. So the, their, their welfare guidelines always have things that are being updated through the state level. And if you don't have them in place, then it's difficult for you to enforce things or... So this would be an added to her welfare book? Yep. Yep. There's no signature required here. It's no, it's just basically adopting the right. state's... Right, it's the client signature. <laughs> That's the, the That's the form that they would have to right. sign. exactly. And if they don't agree to it, then they that gives her no, more... I'm, I'm only joking because you have a signature signed here. <laughs> well, <I guess laughs> That's why I was like, signed here. I'm, like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have had a flag. No housing for you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Dave. <coughs> okay, I have no problem with that. Can we make a motion then? Yeah, I'll make a motion we adopt the state language for... The welfare department, department, as recommended by the welfare, our welfare director. I second. And discussion. Is that called the shelter agreement? Yes. Yeah. That would be the example what they have to. They don't sign it. Don't sign it. By not signing it, it, it the, the, the client would be subject to be received to receive no benefits if he doesn't want to sign and comply with the state guidelines. Okay, I'm in agreement with you. Okay. Three zero. Okay, next item. Uh, I would just like that with with uh, with sadness and with happiness. Uh, I'm happy to announce that. Um, that Eric, our, 
administrator in the uh, town administrative office is going to be taking a new job. So I'm very happy for him. He's going to be getting better benefits and um, a, a job closer to his home and probably a little more, a few more dollars. But it's a loss for Dunbarton Martin because he's been doing a real good job. And I just like to say it's been a pleasure that he, we've had him on board. He knows for a short time he's done a great job for us, and I hope he can find a replacement. I think we'll be talking about that later on this evening. Yes. Yep. Okay. He wrote a, he gave us notes. He's leaving on a high note. Yep. He's giving us a, two, a full two weeks. And he also extended if we needed something else, help, he'd be willing yep. to come back and help us. Yeah. I think the town he's moving to has also agreed to let him be flexible with his hours in the event he has to stop in. Yeah, I like to make that as an exception, but I think if, yeah. if, if, if it came down to a real emergency, I'm yeah. sure he would step up. That's good. That's yeah. nice enough. Yeah. And I think it's a... Uh, what I asked Lee to do is uh, go through the latest reconciling with him to finish out 2021 and at least this current year as much as we can. Yeah. And if need be, Eric said he would be available to work some additional hours at home to make sure it doesn't get finished up. So it's something board, like he wants to complete this. Yeah, so as a board, I'd like to, even though we're accepting his resignation, to keep him on as a town employee until we get that stuff right away. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Is that all right? Consensus? Yeah. Yep. So, right, so active, let him know. Active employee. We'll keep him an active employee until we get the, all okay. of the. That way, when you're calling him and asking him questions, he can get paid for that time. So. Okay. Next item. We have the engineering report from Prexor Engineering. He's our eyes on the uh, on a building addition for the Town Hall Library. Um, he found some shortcomings, and some of them had already been replaced because they were working on them just this week. They were replaced, making replacements. Uh, Lean has shared this with the uh, building inspector. There will be a second eyes and ears on there. Eyes on there, not ears, but eyes. To take a look at to make sure that the shortcomings are recommended, changes are made. He gave it to Dennis Myers, the uh, engineer. Dave, you have any comment on this one? Uh, no, as he, he was, I was at the site when he was talking to them about them, and as he brought it up, they were already switching the nails out. They they did a joist hanger nail, which is an inch and a half long on the hangers instead of a 10D common nail. And so they were switching them out right away, so. And he's talking about moving, uh, just I was uh, say a few jacks and a stuff. A few like jacks that. and GMs, yeah. Doesn't look like anything major. No, in fact, his, his comment was overall, aside from the small, th the few things he picked up, uh, all work observed to this date appears to be com conformance with the structural drawings and design intent. So, uh, uh, for the record, uh, I think Jeff Trucks is doing a knockout job for the town of Denver. Yeah. So, thank you, Jeff. All right, we discussed the police department, Cameron Grant. All right, gentlemen. Mr. I want to first off start off by saying. Last week, Joe Marie was kind of like overseeing the office uh, during the uh, town ministry, was on vaca took a vacation week. And uh, Mr. Tuttle decided to come in and start doing work and uh, work beyond the scope of what the warranty work. He's not responsible for a contract or for the uh, repairing the, where we get splashed back from the, from the roof hit the rocks coming back on the ground. And so uh, he wanted an immediate or I say, decision made so we can proceed with that. Joe Marie articulately, we very articulate and said, we need a quote from you. We just can't do it just because of one person can't do it. It's got to go for the board. We wanted the board to meet on like an emergency session. And I told Joe Marie on the phone, this does not raise to a surf to the level of an emergency. She completely agreed with me and asked him for a, very politely for a quote. We have a quote for that. So we have the you see, if you walk around the front of the building, you can see the paint. He was starting to do the work without authorization, and I, I was not happy about that. And the, the, he has, we have a quote for it in here, and it's quite high. Uh, I'd like to know from him, how far up does, is the splashback? Is it three feet, six feet, ten feet? And because there are some places where it's peeling, and he should cover that. And the question is, I, I want you, we can look at the, the quote, have you seen the quote? No. Okay. I don't want to discuss numbers here because we may end up putting it back out. And that's the quote right there. The one one copy? No. no. That's the original. That's the original, okay. and that's where on page two at the bottom. Right. And on page two, it's a 10 year warranty, no peel ex except for low boards and roof splash. Well, how far are low boards? And the thing is, obviously, I learned my lesson. We, we have to measure it next time. Yeah, I'm thinking the windows and below, but 
That would be considered low board? I think so, because you're going to have the splash back up probably three to the feet window. heavy road, yeah. So below where you can see here. In my own mind is what I'm thinking. Okay. So the question I asked, I bring to the board is, I saw the amount, I thought it was a little too high for the amount of work that needs to be done. For God's sake, I could ask Woody's crew to pay him overtime, to come up and, and do some a little bit of sanding and painting, and they they walk away happier than clams because of what the money we'd be paying. Woody, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to you too. In, in the sense that um, it's not rocket scientists. We're not talking about getting on a, a ladders and going up 10, 20 feet. We're talking about window and below. Well, let me read the scope of work. Um, Please. Without doing any dollar amounts. Painting of peeling areas, especially low areas, and splash up areas, 90%. Uh, trim west side bush. Apparently that was done already, I think. Without authorization. Separate grind. Um, scrape grind, caulk, seal, selected nails, spot oil prime, and finish coat. Estimate all labor materials of Figured 90% of both. It looks like he's charging us of 100%, 90% of the areas is what he's calling in the low areas or splash areas. What was this building when we did it? Do you remember? Got it right here. Got it right here. We talked about that. It was, uh, uh, I'll take it. Yeah. Let's see that original one. Absolutely. Right? It's yellow right there. Right, but the total's there somewhere. Yeah, the bottom. was in what year, Dave, I don't recall, I don't recall. 2019? Was it 17 or 19? Or? What year was that? Um, this was 17, 17. So four years ago. Four years ago. I will say, back then, the whole front side of this building was only 1750. Apparently the south was much worse, because that was the larger part, and the north was much more. And the back, which is calling east, I'm thinking is right here, was the lowest amount. So that is the front, I'm thinking. Yeah. South is here, north is here. Yeah. So I think we should at least make so a phone call. west side, wouldn't it? No, really, north. North is on my way. He's got his opposite. I'm like, wait. Well, he did. East and west, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's north. That's no, 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 no. North is there. North is there. North is the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. And south is there? Yeah. And like east would be that side. Yours, yeah. Oh, so he called the street side the front, I guess. And the east is the back. Correct. Okay. So that makes more sense. Depends which way you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, well, they're the two larger sides of the building. But um, it's almost the same dollar amount as he had originally. Is this for the whole building? Sizes. No, it's just for the lower half. Just for the, I know, but the whole perimeter oh, yes, is just yes. the front the, of the, 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 the entire mm -hmm. building. Oh, it is all the way around? Right, wherever there's peeling paint. You can walk around. There's not, there's not a whole heck of a lot of peeling paint in the back. In the side. Uh, but it's mostly here. What about the gable ends? It, that, it's that's all the way around. All the way around. No, but the gable ends, there's no rain dripping. There's no roof dripping. True, it should be, no, there's less there, less there, if any. That's should well, be that's they did. Uh, there's probably less peeling there, too. Yeah, that, that should you be under the more percent, 90% of this is worn, is, uh, is, cover, is, is not. But the gable end should be under the warranty, I believe. Correct. Because there's no, no splash. splash. Right, but what splash. I'm telling you is there's very little peeling on the gable end, so there's very little work there anyway. Okay, well, it still can be finished. <laughs> but he gave, he gave us 10% of... The total peeling free. is covered under warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Whoopie deal. You know, you don't, just to be honest with you guys, you don't normally get paint warranties anyway because an old building like this, 
It just doesn't mean much. No, technically. <laughs> well, yeah, but he gave you one. Yeah, he did. So but he took that's out, his. That's his problem. But he took out the wet areas, the splash up areas. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, what what, what do we want to do as a board? Do we want to have a, a few more quotes? Do we want to have uh, offer it to uh, some some people who are just laborers having some laborers come up? Have our handyman do it? I'm gonna I'm gonna go at it like this. We spent a lot of money. We did that building. Yeah. To make sure it was scraped. Yeah. And done right. And I'd rather see it scraped right and sanded and done right than have somebody just put a coat on it after it's come off. Next year. Understood. But you know, four years doesn't sound like much, but until this year, that didn't look like that. Mm -hmm. We had a couple little spots, mm -hmm. and then it just really went this spring. I don't know why. No, I think he started scraping. He must have scraped. Cause That's what I thought. Because it didn't look they, like that. When I, I, no. I was out for a week. But the thing but is, he, he can't do it without a prior authorization. No, that, I that, think he did it only because we asked Lee to call him several times to get him in here. And to at least do the warranty stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you... you, you I'm wanna, okay with it. I just want it done right. I know that we didn't take those other two vendors at half the amount on that building because we didn't want it done wrong. Right, understood. And I'm it had been done wrong in the past. And I'm afraid of using a separate contractor after he's already, he'll still have six years to his warranty left. Yeah, it's not under the warranty. Huh? Well, the 90% the of this is not yeah, coming under the warranty. <laughs> yeah, but still, he's still touching part of All right. it. You know what I mean? It's like. The other thing, too, is if we have him do this, right, and then we get some further up. That's all That's a warranty. Absolutely. Leo said. Yeah. yeah. Above Leo's head right there is a warranty. Warranty is warranty. It doesn't matter what, <laughs> what the, the rest of the people yeah. are doing. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'm Justin, let's just Justin take a moment of that. I don't want to jump in. This is, this is still, a, still a pretty good amount of money. <clears throat> all right. I know that his invoices are, are confusing sometimes, so I need clarification. They're just hard to read. It is hard to read. But it's in writing. Now, is there anything you didn't understand about what I just read? Um, you said 90% is, is, is not on the warranty. Not on the warranty splash. So does that mean we're getting a 10% discount? No, he didn't. He, no, he no. didn't include it. He did not include it. He okay, priced it. It's okay. a 100% level. He priced it at a 90% level. Yes. Oh, okay. I got it. That's how I understood. That's the Okay. All right. Justin? Yeah, we are. So that, that was great. seems fairly expensive to the original quote. That was four well, years that ago. That was four years ago, okay. But I think it's let's talk a little bit of inflation. We got a little inflation, okay, but still a little expensive in my book. I think that's the library though. I don't know that we can use is that one for this? No, that's for this building. Did I put it in the right yeah, now? Okay. Yeah, you okay. You want to you feel comfortable spending that money? I do only because I don't want to mix contractors. I mean, how do you guarantee the top half if he didn't? Yeah. All right, now, but he's he's going to. I mean, he's actually when he was out here doing the work, he was actually grinding it down to the, yeah, uh, the, so the wood that I wanted. To have the right, and, and putting the oil base on back on there as a primer. All right, can I make a better suggestion? We go vinyl. No. <laughs> <Not any feelings. laughs> Oh, that's really not in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's not cheap anymore. All right. Yeah. And these are the two originals, this back, back sheet with the two original well, quotes for this? Back in the day, yeah. 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 All right. Dave, I mean, I'm, I'm hesitantly leaning towards agreeing with you. Hesitantly. You know, I wish it was less, too, but I tell you one thing. It's so hard getting that. Uh, All right. Uh, the thing is, he, show up he, he was complaining that since we didn't make an immediate decision, he may not have to get to us right away. I don't care if he gets it done October 31st, as long as it's done this year. Agreed? Well, now that he scraped it, I'd like him to follow through with it. If he can, it looks a lot worse than it did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. People are going to start asking us what we're doing here pretty quick. Well, I would say... It's like the paint on the cars, right? Lean, I would ask him for a, an estimated schedule of completion. I will... Get that first before yeah. I say okay, it's a go. And we'll give them a consensus to go ahead with that number for now. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so I we'll do that. Like, I really don't want to mix contractors. I just don't like the idea of it. But I would. Like I tried it. to get you guys overtime. Would you have tried? <laughs> I would like it now that it's all scraped to be done. I hate to look at that all summer coming in. All right. 
All right. That was the hard one today. All right. And I know we don't have it in our maintenance budget, but I think... No, we do have, we can cover that. No, but I'm, I'm thinking here and there next year we should look at a proper drip line because this one's good in some spots, but it's down and up. If we should finish this one up and we should do that building so that we don't have that issue over there either with the stone around the building. Well, so. how do you... I mean, you need stone. Yeah, and we don't have it on that. Oh, okay, okay, that's what you're saying. There's just yeah. a little bit of it in this one here. You know, we were supposed to have some, but Mike never filled it all up even as kind of... He's not, he's not a, a mason guy right. or a landscaper. He's so I think next year we should look at both buildings and get that done right. Okay, that's yeah. right. Can, I, can I say something? Sure. Usually when you have a drip line like that, you like to have it sloped to a floor. When it hits, it doesn't come back up this way. It goes out. Yeah, slope from the, away from the building. Yeah, and yeah. some are low and some are high. It's yeah. not, so it's usually right. you want a drip line away from the building. Yeah. Really. I'd say that, that would be it for next year, next spring. Yeah. Okay. So do we need to make a motion to approve that? No, we have, we're going to give consensus to uh, You got a comment? Oh, yeah. Go, on, I'm all, <laughs> go ahead. I can save you a ton of money on doing that. Final siding? <laughs> the drip line? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, when, you, when you're talking your stone here. Yeah. I don't know how deep you're going, but... You're talking about filling it full of glass. And then cover it with stone. Oh, I like that idea. <clears throat> and the glass is... The glass is good enough you can put your hand in it and not get cut up, as I remember. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's not down that far because they did do this building last year. But well, how deep do you really have to go, though? And gee, how oh, it's green it's below grade, grade if you threw that article in the newspaper. Some of it's below grade. If you look at it, like the lawn's up here and the stone's down here, you know, it okay, should yeah. be done right. Yeah, right, yeah. And but my, my how often do we make glass runs? My point with that is three, four times a year. You don't want to catch the water that's going to seep into the building, you know, the, uh, into the right. basement. You know, you want to shed the water. We're right. talking about do, the, you know? the stone. We also need to address the sidewalks. There's a lot of little things that we haven't. Yeah, next but, year. But what, what what I like is the idea of like instead of buying all the stone, we could get close to free, right? <laughs> I'll double check on it, but I'm positive it, one thing would be my truck and up and back. Right. So you're going to take a load up. You're right. Take a load back. Yeah, but you work for the town. No, we're talking about gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so noted, Woody. I like I'll, the idea. I'll check. Okay. Thank you. Just looking for more money for this department. That's all right. I don't <laughs> mind. But I just think you could boost right. this a little. Take a couple pictures, throw it in the paper, go back and let some use some glass, and they're green about it. Say it. Publicity goes a long way. Yeah. And it's as I said. If you don't, people don't realize it. It sounds terrible as glass, but you can put your hand into it and not get cut up. Yeah, it's like sand. Well, was it crushed? Yeah, yeah it's crushed. Like the, what? Very it's small. Like, it's peak, peak, a small, a little smaller than peak gravel. Let's it's try it on your house first. Hey, <laughs> you put your hand in there first. I'll bring you. I'll bring you. I did. I brought some up. I'll bring you. And we were trying to convince the road agent at the time, as I recall, to use it as a filler in his. Uh, Use it as on the dirt roads. He's got it. Can we get all the same color glass? Yeah. You want to pick through it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys will volunteer it for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on. Um, town offices will be closed at 3 p.m. July 12th for an active shooter training. Yes. Okay. That is open to all departments. And all right, all right. just uh, all town employees. <laughs> all town employees. Yeah. On the calendar, I want to make sure we had the, uh, uh, the fee schedule discussion. We were going to have it when? We are having the fee schedule discussion on the 21st, but I need information from the departments as to what they're proposing to the selectmen, and you guys have to review that right. and say yay or nay if you don't agree with it, and you may say that there are no changes to be made. And then that being said, if there are required changes, then we have to, by RSA, give the seven days notice, and it's got to be put in the paper and did, to the public. Did you send, uh, you send out notifications to the departments? <coughs> to, to the departments, yes. Have you received? Just the one from Chris back in the day, which I still <laughs> have kept in okay. my files. Okay. I think we has got some that working, stuff to working work on. Working on it? Okay. Yeah. You get time. Okay. Yeah, I'll send a reminder up. Send a reminder up. Next week. Yeah. I like to have it uh, before the 21st. I don't want to, in other words, if we can look at it, have it wrap our heads around it and see where we're going. 
think it's this one. Dave brought up a good point, and I'm, I, it kind of lives with me, Dave. Um, the town residents already pay taxes, and so I don't. Part of the taxes should cover some of these costs, and I don't want to soak the residents double double dip on double dip on. Okay, so I think I don't mind having increases, but reasonable increases as needed. And so I, I really think that statement you made was quite. You know, it's easy to say charge this person for dumping, but you know, we don't have a lot uh, for the tax base that we're paying here in this town. I think the services that we provide are important to the whole town. Exactly. Although there's one, just an FYI, one fee is still by, we, one of the decisions or recommendations I'd like to see from you, Woody, commercial haulers. Whether we open up again, and if we do open up, what we charge. Now, I really need the recommendations from you. I think he's he's done anyways. He's got his own thing. They got their own process. And maybe but just, regardless, if we have a policy in place, if you have somebody <coughs> wrong, this is our new policy. Good point. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, let's uh, open up for public comment again. Oh, sure. Thank you. No, thank nope. you. Okay. Uh, we have two uh, non-publics tonight. I'm going to take a. I like to make a non-public. Before just bring it back to all of that because you'll be gone. Okay, uh, Lee, I'm going to let you go first. Let's comment for this. Um, it's something I'm going to have to think on it. I did not write it down, so if you want to go around. Okay, Justin, I'll let you go first. Uh, I just want to ask Lee to uh, make sure that myself and if Mike's not on the town hall uh, emails, just add us to the list. I think you said uh, to Jeff Trexler's, just so we get those reports and we're part of the conversation. Just so we know kind of what's going on. Okay. I don't get those either until they. Oh, you don't get those on? Not until no. I come to the meeting. Lean to so the we board. all should be added to this. I think we all should be. Too. Yeah, I think in the beginning they made Lean the point of contact, then she distributes them, but I don't care. We can yeah. all be on that. Yeah, because they, in the beginning there were, I was probably getting two or three a day for, um, but now that it's settled down, this is just the inspection report. Okay. Yeah, I think we would all be good to be a part of it. Okay. Anything else? Just that's it. Dave, to you. I'm good this week. Okay. Uh, just a request of the, fire, of the police department. I could get a, uh, a statistic for the month of uh, three for the quarter of how many tickets, speeding tickets, have given out in Dunbar. I can tell you. Versus warnings and warnings. I think he has it in his monthly reports. He does. And okay. I can tell you that they're running between a 25 and 27 percent ratio of people pulled over versus tickets and warnings. So that stayed continuous from the last police chief, and I did ask um, Chris Rumbler to make sure that he stays on that pace, because say they pull you over as a resident, right? I want them to have the ability to say, Mike, could you please slow down in the center of town here and give you a warning? And I, I like the fact that our police department does that, and it's not like some other towns that give every single person they pull over a ticket, and I like that okay. small town it, it, feel from it. It was concerning me because I, I feel there's a, in my, just a non scientific perception, too much speeding going through the center of town. Oh, yeah. They um, they catch quite a few people. <coughs> I was at meetings in the last month there, and every night they had people pulled over in this town right here in the center. And, you know, it's, it's getting to a point where uh, my better half gets passed by a Porsche, cross double line, right in the center of town. She's going about 32, about the speed limit by two. Why well, a challenger? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, uh, she was just peeled at me when I got home, I tell you that. What kind of police department are you running this town? <laughs> Never to be found. Unfortunately. And so I had to defend the police department. <laughs> yeah, they, um, yeah, they can't be there every no, every, I, I, every week and second, absolutely. too. But, I mean, it happens on other roads. We've seen it happen Lee on the is right. Road. In their monthly report to us, it breaks yeah. down. Yeah. Every person they pull over yeah. and how many times they get. But, but I think it, I just, I, just my perception, I just feel that the center is getting too much, too much speed. I've been watching the percentages just okay. to see how that's been okay. going. Good. Okay, thank you. So no action, but I'll just let them know that they, you did voice a concern about. Uh, especially in the center of town where the speed limit drops. It just One thing we did voice last month's, or last, last meeting was um, the signs, the signs that. The speed signs, right? The light. Could you ask? I guess I could. I'm the. I'll ask her because I'm the supposed to be the contact person. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give myself a job. I'll ask him where the speed signs are. Scratch that link. 
Oh, sorry. Put on my list. Okay. okay. And another thing I had too. So Go ahead. Sorry, was uh, who's who's on the town force committee? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be. Okay. I thought it was you, and they said it's me posted on the website. So can you double check that? Okay. Make sure that gets changed. What was that town forest or was yeah. it Kano? Both of them are supposed to be. He's got both. Are you on both? I have been on both, and we were giving uh, Justin way too many things, and I took him back because we talked about giving them to Justin, but with him being on the planning board and running his own business and all the other boards he's actually on right now, he's got a pretty full agenda. <laughs> all right, so make sure the website's updated with your name on KTMCA and town board. Yeah. It's back to me, Dave. Anything else? Nope, so I have to get um, Energy committee met this week. Uh, they let, they spent some time on the roof. A few members on the roof of the school. They repaired the solar hot water heater. It had a leak in it, and they brazed it. And they did some soldering up there. And this is supposedly is holding its own right now. Mm -hmm. They are also getting two quotes from two companies to look at. They were looking at a place to put a solar farm in town to support the school system. And this because it's a huge electric. They, they, they've retracted because there's really nowhere in town where they can put it. So they're looking at potentially putting it on the, the, uh, the roofing and the, uh, the roof system of the school. It's a perfectly aligned system to be facing as it faces south. And so they're getting quotes right now uh, from two different companies to see, and then they'll approach the school board with the potential of uh, create some savings for the town. And they, they even have some other ideas. But the thing is, the, the, the problem with the solar panels right now, they need three-phase uh, connectivity. When they can make a small system, and you can connect it to almost anywhere in town. But to get of anything of substance where it's going to pay off and pay dividends to the town, you have to have three-phase. They had a section, they had a selection by the, by the uh, on the roof, uh, just before the uh, get to the transfer station, before the dam. There's a beautiful piece of town property there. There's no three-phase power there. So that was a great site, but we can't get the number of panels in there and then make it pay off for the town. The school has three-phase uh, three power right there. And so they're looking at that consideration. Gregory. Uh, just how old is that roof? I think it's a commensurate with the school renovation. Okay, so it's fairly new. Yeah, and it's a, it's, as as I recall, it's a metal roof, too. How does that get mounted? Uh, screw it through? Screw it through, yeah. I know you could never get me to put something. Um, and we had a resident ask for some help, and did the, they respond to you there, mm -hmm. Mr. Yep, eventually, yeah, they, yeah. I guess they're having issues with their email. But yes, that was uh, uh, that was discussed so, this week. Yeah. So I did, Dana Lavoy called me, had a good chat with him, uh, and uh, he offered up his help in any, in any way, you know, any information I needed. I okay. guess uh, one of the other members will be coming to my house to talk with me because he actually uh, installed his own system. Correct. And so it saved gonna, a boatload of dollars. Yeah. Well, actually, my son-in-law did the same thing, and he said he paid a third of the price by doing it himself, right. which was a massive saving. You know? So yeah, they were very helpful. Yeah. And the thing is, they're they're helpful. Any resident, they have, they're, they have a problem with their website, so they're open to any resident yeah. who wants to put solar panels up, and uh, they'll give advice how to do it, uh, give recommendation to companies if you don't want to do it yourself. Yeah. Uh, this, what is this? This is the energy committee. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have for now. I have to make a motion to go non public for RSA 91 dash alpha, subparagraph Roman number, uh, subparagraph 3, Roman number 2, paragraph A.